My name is Jerome, I'm the CEO of AQ. Um, today I'm gonna show you how we leverage uh, ATP code, total price, API into our visual analytics. But let me start by saying that here in this room we all have something in common. And when I say something common on top of the love of ATP code category 15 combined with 25, etc., right? The thing we have in common is that we are all data visualizers. We are all in demand of visual aspects of the information. And if you look at this analysis from a Danish physicist, he measured the bandwidth of our five senses using computer terms. If our taste can be compared to a pocket calculator, then our hearing and smell will be compared to hard disk, our touch, the USB key, and our site to a computer network. And so the site has the highest bandwidth. And if you factor that with the fact that the brain has the ability to process 60,000 times faster visual information than text, you end up with the conclusion that we, here in this room, are all natural born visualizers. And that is not new, actually. That's a part of our nature. And that's why, if you look at this chart uh, that has been made 150 years ago by a French engineer, um, it's one of the first and best known charts representing visual information. It shows how Napoleon's army was losing soldiers days after days while marching toward Moscow and then coming back to France. So this is, uh, obviously, the data behind is not that nice, right? But it is a truly eloquent and truly visual chart. And actually, it inspired what we call now uh, the Sankey diagrams. And that's a Sankey diagram. That's a Sankey diagram that one of my guys made the other day, last week, based on ATP code data. My point is that Visually, those two graphs are very similar. But my point also is to stress on the fact that behind, between Napoleon's battlegrounds and today, the volume of data that we need to handle is incomparable. Forbes says, said recently in a study that if we look at all the data that we have now, today, well, 90% of it was produced over the last two years. So that's stunning. And that's also valid for our industry. Maybe not in the same proportions, but that's also valid. It's, we all see an exponential growth in the production and the consumption of travel data. So that's the real challenge. The real challenge is not only the visual part. The challenge is to process billions of price points a day, on the one hand, and be able, on the other hand, to end up with responsive, um, intuitive dashboards so the users can take action. So that's, that's the real challenge that we have today as data visualizers, IT companies. So how do we do that? Well, there are a few secrets behind it. Uh, the first one is you definitely need to have a very consistent database, data foundation. That's a must, no gaps. If you have gaps, then when you're gonna aggregate the data, you're gonna lose valuable information. That's the first stage. Then you need to enrich, to combine, to aggregate information in order to go from those billions of records down to hundreds of thousands or millions that will be consumed uh, by the interface and by the users. And the way to do that is allying IT expertise and business expertise in the same room, in the same teams. Our data scientists, they speak fluently, Scala, Hadoop, you name it, but they also understand your needs as pricing analysts, as team leaders, as revenue management directors, and so on. And Having those two expertise combined 
it allows us to find smart ways, combining the data, aggregating the data, and ending up with volumes of data that, are, that can be digested by both the uh, front end and the user. Um, let me show you, oh, this I'm gonna skip. Let me show you this uh, example uh, of how we marry applicable prices filed in ATPCO and available prices which are observed in that case by our partner Infair. This is, a, this is an example of uh, one market, two airlines, one single cabin. On the x-axis, you can see the departure weeks. On the y-axis, you can see the atypical data in the bar charts. So you can see the number of fare bases by booking code. And uh, the curve represents the observed price available on, on the market at the given time. So visually, very quickly, you can see that airline one has a very different strategy than airline two in terms of filing. They are using much more buckets and much more fare basis into the buckets. That's the first visual finding that you have here. The second one is when comparing the curves, you can see that the patterns are very similar. There are two main peaks, one for the coming departure days, which is the first one, and the other one being the seasonality, and in this case, that's Christmas. And the last information that you can find here, if you pay attention, airline one, the curve is more or less matching the applicable prices filed um, into ATPCO, the public one. Whereas, if you look at the airline two, the bottom price is below the public prices filed into ATPCO, meaning that Airline 2 is obviously using private fares on top of the public fares that are filed. So, I would like to conclude on the fact that AI stands for usually artificial intelligence, but I do believe that, and I strongly believe, that as far as visual analytics are concerned, AI should stand for actionable information. I'm not saying that there is no intelligence. On the contrary, I'm saying that ultimately our objective is to leverage the know-how of our users in order to combine the intelligence of the tool with the intelligence of uh, the users themselves. Thank you.